That's what we can say is um, secret like these like to pick these offlaners that you can sort of just leave on an island pretty much yeah. just play away from there try and do whatever and then this offlaner just gets super fat because there's pressure being applied on the other side of the map but uh let's look at these bands pretty normal secret has banned like monkey king pretty much every single game uh, so I think they're gonna keep up with that tradition. Maybe it could bite them later if they keep locking in this one band to a monkey all the time. But SG do play it, so seems fine. And uh, I should say, like with Puppy, he's this one guy who will never ever underestimate any team. Mm -hmm. So if this, I think this is actually one of the worst match matchups for SG esports. If they were trying to get this uh, underdog thing going and uh, secret like probably study them as much as they possibly can. They don't want to really lose right now after their amazing performance during the groups. I was curious to see what approach that SG was going to take into the draft. And now we kind of like see it right away with the Ricky Tree bands. They're trying to take out these like obnoxious lane heroes that right. are just really annoying. I, I thought that they might target Kezu. Yeah. But they actually go for that type of approach. It, it's much more difficult to ban out the offlaners because there's just so many of them mm -hmm. in this patch. But the invis moving ward kind of hero like Ricky and Tree, Tree and they're the best ones, right? Yeah. And the monkey's already banned. So mm -hmm. them in this patch. That's, uh, you're pretty much banning three out of three. But the Maybe invis we'll see a bounty hunter now, moving ward like kind of, of hero like. Last, Ricky and Tri uh, Trian, they're the best ones, in right? Yeah. And the monks left, so... Mm. Obviously, like, Secret uh, didn't yep. expect that, because they took a long time to first pick that wall. I think they're mm -hmm. already chewing through some reserve time. Like, you've had days to prepare for this matchup. Mm. They probably thought they'd at least get one of those two heroes. In yeah, there a little game. bit caught out, perhaps. Uh, the CM ban isn't that uh, wild, obviously, from this matchup. Mm -hmm. the most played here by SG. So they've picked up in all three of their games. Yeah. Uh, before uh, and the one win that they had came with the puck and the slock. Yep, the clockwork. They go clockwork. It's like their favorite hero. I feel clockwork yeah. puck slark, right? That game. Yep. And they did open clockwork in that game as well. They did. Uh, SG. Yep. So they're going. Maybe they're thinking like, okay, guys, this is the one game where we took out a really big fish with. So let's try and um, figure out like what went right in that game, what was strong in our draft, and let's. You know, replicate it. See if it works again. I like how they do that too because they run it in different roles. They run it as support and as offlane. So I mm -hmm. feel like it, right away they're like, okay, yeah. let's leave our options open. This is our most comfortable hero as well. So let's roll with it. Ooh, Kunkka. That's, Kunkka. A, Ooh. that's a really yeah, strong a team different. fighting hero. Every time I see Kunkka, you know, it's not something that everyone plays. But when you see it, it like bring some fear that yeah. your team fight can be very lacking against this hero. Do you think it's at all a block pick? Because that was actually a hero Puppy played in one of their last games too. Was, like, yep. Obviously he's got more, like he's played the Tusk as well, but it, it feels like a potentially partially block pick as well. Like you've banned out so many of the four position heroes, take one of the few that's left that Puppy plays. Yeah, and they haven't played it yet either, so it's pretty interesting to see them grab like this duo. Like, we've been seeing a lot of like similarity between, between some of these drafts, and then when we look and we see Clockwork Kunkka, I feel like I haven't seen these heroes in, in, two, in like two days almost. Yeah. <laughs> right. Secret, gonna take their time a little bit here. Maybe surprised by the Kunkka pick as well. Mm -hmm. I wanna see if they match up like a kind of roamer. Like they picked the Tusk with the Warlock the other time. I think it's pretty good versus Kunkka as well, having like that kind of save versus the Boat and Torrent. Yeah, most of the time, Okay, it's going to be a drug, a drug. so it's very good versus Kunkka. You yeah. can't really cast a spell X on him or anything, you can just spin it off. Um, as for the Tusk, I think Secret have like some cues that allow them to pick the Tusk. For example, Legion Commander. Yeah. We also saw uh, Liquid picking the Tusk versus the Legion. So not seeing that, they see the Kunkka, very solid counter pick with the drug. Mm -hmm. A carry that can't really be pressured. And a carry that can also go mid as well. So yes. you're not totally revealing what you're doing necessarily with your lanes and drafts. If you want to put this in the mid lane, you can. Could also maybe... It's, I think this is HFN's probably one of his most played heroes as well. The Jug from the safe lane. So maybe they're trying to like, okay, we got it. his Jug right now already too. Like you said, Puppy does like to plan. So that could be an approach right. that they're going as well. As it being as well very good versus the Kunkka and Clockwork. So bounty being banned out, so three of Puppy's <laughs> heroes, straight I mean, off. May as well, like you're already limiting the pool, yep. that may as well limit it even further. Right. I, actually, I've seen in a lot of tournaments while I was coaching that teams tend to single out Puppy a lot. Because he has like these um, three or four key heroes he likes to cycle through. And uh, when you ban it out, you might potentially put Secret in a very awkward position. 
where they don't really want to pick a hero, but they're forced to pick a hero because the ones that they normally do are gone. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a sometimes can be a very solid strategy. Spirit Breaker ban too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty well. Yeah, I think we know who they're aimed at. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I like the SF ban. It's one of those yep. carries that pairs very well with the Clockwork because you get the free souls at level one. It mm -hmm. makes that laning stage very dominant. And you've got no four position heroes to help that mid lane, so you're pretty much guaranteed to have win that, at least do very well in that mid lane for your SGE sports with a Shadow Fiend with Insta Souls and no four position roaming heroes really Sick. available. And it's like so much team fight. If they were, if SG were to get like a Shadow Fiend with Clocka, uh, Clockwork, <laughs> Clocka, <laughs> Clockwork Kunkka, it's just so, it's like extremely powerful to keep the distance away from the Shadow Fiend. Just very good heroes with him. Yep. Tinker, good band. They have uh, two heroes that. Actually, Jug is pretty good versus Tinker, but they don't really have the catch mm -hmm. at the moment. And maybe the Spear Breaker ban made them think that there's a potential that SG actually want to play with the Tinker here. And we have seen the old school, like the Kunkka Tinker, the, 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 that, that kind of cheat, like not cheese combo, but the X into, you know, you go in, you can drop marches, you get X back, and then X yeah. rockets, etc. So... We, one thing we talked about Secret was that when they were drafting, they had a lot of vision heroes, right? There was mm -hmm. a draft where they had uh, Lycan and Templar in the same team. They had Wolves and Ricky, so they would play off the information that they received from these heroes. This game, they picked Warlock and Jug, neither are vision heroes, and four vision heroes were banned out. So that looks like something that uh, SG Esports can be working with here. Perhaps identifying that is Secret's uh, main strategy. Yep. An aggressive support pick and disruptor, one of those series. If you want to fight and kind of meet Team Secret's tempo and chase them down, Glimpse will be very uh, kind of effective way to rotate around, find some kills for you, your yeah, team. Yeah, not so good against the Jug, though, still. No, not at all. Uh, so now they have an offlaner and two supports who are not good versus the Jug. Um, could get a little weird. They're going to need to get a very good matchup on the other two cores. The glimpse isn't good, but in some ways, like, you go a gank with, like, a hook shot into a static storm. That could right, be good. Right, right. So it is an insta-silence yeah. disable for the jug. It gives sure. you a way to actually gank him when he's farming, but, right. yeah, in, like, most stage of the game, like, if Jug's just trying to push you down or whatever, it, it can it doesn't have an answer for the, the glimpse. They've yeah. got an immense amount of catch now, too. All three heroes are some of the best casting he catching heroes that mm -hmm. you can have. Right. So Tusk, they are yeah, going to pick it, so... It. Pretty good against uh, Kunkka and Disruptor in a way. You can just uh, snowball the X target, yep. protect him, or get someone out of a cage from the Disruptor. Hmm. Wonder if they're gonna go back for their type of like invoker that they really do like to play, since they already have like the clockwork and pretty good setup for for the hero. They do really like it as well. Hmm. So the question here is, is SG going to pick their mid first or yeah. their carry? And which one would they like to hide? Um, the information they have right now is that there's a Tusk. He could be roaming on mid. Maybe they already want to pick a mid who's not going to die mm -hmm. to any like combination of Tusk. Okay, Troll, that's a hero that can go in two lanes, mid or carry. So good choice. Sort of hiding their uh, both fourth pick and their last pick. Gives him an objective uh, taker. He's also very good naturally versus the Tusk. You know, if you snowball people in, you have Whirling Axes can work really well in that favor. Also, pretty good matchup versus the Juggernaut. Yep. Being and able to bash through Objective spin and powers, but as well, Roshan. Roshan so as well, yeah. I, I really feel like SG Esports are playing pretty heavily towards the early game. And the here's the to... Ember. Yep, so is. this is yeah. uh, mid one, one of his signature heroes, and uh, very strong combination with the Warlock. We were waiting for the combo they want to use with the Fatal Bonds, and... Ember, he has his Flame Guard from very early in the game. Lots of AoE damage that he deals out. Mm -hmm. And SG doesn't really have like any you know, like instant stuns or anything. They have like an X and a Torrent and Disruptor ulti and stuff like that. But Ember Spirit can be very cheeky at getting out of those with like mm -hmm. a Sleight of Fist, with his Remnants as well. Obviously, being able to get out of uh, the, the Glimpse Kinetic. Yep. Yeah. And we've actually seen a lot of that lately. Yeah. Feels like uh, these Ember Spirits have become very good at dodging Glimpse. I like the Mag Ban. Having two melee cores already on the side of Secret, I do really like that. Mm -hmm. So now they're going to have to pick uh, Kazu's hero here. Something that could just, you know, go to the offlane, chill. OD ban, okay. That's very hard counter to the Ember in the lane. 
extremely difficult for him to do anything there. Might still be something like an Enigma. I mean, they do have the Clockwork, we can stop the BKB. Yeah. But it gives them... Well, um, Abaddon is still in the pool as well. Oh yeah, Abaddon is still in the pool, that's true. Someone who can remove the Whirling Axis. I mean, either of those here is just gives them some team fight to try yeah. and match up but to it's the, not so, the Kunkka Claw. It's not so good against the Disruptor and the Kunkka oh. though, because of the huh. lockdown they have. Alright, Dark's here. Interesting. Team fight. They, I guess they felt the Warlock wasn't enough just for their team fight now. They want to like add on to that. Right. And go for Tusk Darks here pressure. The other thing is, yeah, it, pre it pressures the lane more. Like the Abaddon and Enigmas, they don't really pressure the lane yeah. as much. Enigma can maybe deny some farm, but this directly maybe contests the, the Trolls lane a bit better. And they've got good Ion Shell carriers ready with the Ember, with the Tusk. Right. Like they're extremely good. This just enables these heroes even more. Uh, if they would ever collapse on a tower with five heroes with the Ember and Jug, very strong huh. with the Darks here. And there we have another Alchemist. Ooh. Hmm, HFN gonna be playing that. It could still be a mid elk or a, I'm sorry, a safe lane elk. Yeah, definitely a possibility. Since HFN is on it, we might well move it around. And hmm, very interesting, very interesting draft indeed, guys. What did you make of that? And uh, I guess we should talk about predictions as well. I, I like the elk pick. I think SG's draft is decent like mm. team secret don't have a good way of like pushing down too many early towers like unless they really want to commit a lot of like the warlock level six perhaps and that's what you need to do against out take towers early can restrict his farm but with that said i i still have to go with team secret i think they're gonna be the better team i think they've got mid one one of his, his best hero yeah. and uh, team secret would still be my prediction okay i'm gonna have to go with team secret as well i like the i just love having like M mid one on his ember spirit like you were talking about i like they also have that the pressure lane now too so i think it's gonna Definitely mess with them, mess with the SG a bit. Okay, two for secret. Team secret. Their skirmishes are amazing with the Darkseer, Ember, and Jug. Very okay. strong. A clean sweep for Team Secret. Perhaps not too surprising after their wonderful group stage performances. Are they going to continue on? Is this win number 22? Let's find out as we head into game one with your commentary team, led as always by Aldi. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We are live here in Kiev, getting ready for the first ever appearance of a Brazilian team at a Valve Major event. Kevin, the last time that we saw a South American team compete at a Valve Major, I believe, was the Frankfurt Major in 2015, when Team Unknown actually upset Nubi in a BO1 in the lower bracket. Yep. Uh, they ended up getting knocked out after that, but uh, the Miracle? Do you yeah. think it's possible here? Absolutely. It, it's a very historic match as well. That was the first time that I've seen at least uh, Alchemist with an armlet, uh, which eventually became the absolute standard trend. And we're going to see it this game as well, actually. So that was the last pick. Vamos! It's time. SG Esports taking on Secret. We hop into the game now. It's certainly a battle of you know, David and Goliath going in with Secret on, I believe it's a 19-game win streak. On the flip side, you have SG Esports who only managed to take one game and ultimately not the series in the group stage, went 0-3, so truly will be, I mean, not just any test. Already it's going to be a big challenge for them. First major event on a huge stage like this with the size and scope of an audience that only a major can bring. And, well, thoughts on the draft here as we start to hop into the game? I know we saw the Juggernaut pick, and then they yeah. kind of doubled down with the Disruptor on a hero that Jug really seems set up to counter well. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, but I do kind of like what SG can do. If they do get some advantage, they can easily run down Secret and keep Secret where they want them to be. So uh, if it's the, the flip side, if Secret's running at SG, they're not going to have the best time getting away from them, I think. Yeah, so Secret already looking for that early jungle incursion as they smoke, and they are going to find Cat in the woods trying to sneak away as the Disruptor, but in quite a bit of danger here. The Snowball revs up, and actually, they're going to head towards Adriano. Instead, they catch him out initially, throws out the Axes, does not have the Berserker's Rage yet. He's going to get caught, and he will be quickly brought down. Secret finding that early first blood with the double Ion Shell shenanigans, and undoubtedly not the last time we're going to see it this game. This is... Uh, on the flip side, a secret lineup that also wants to be chasing you and running you down. Yeah, and most likely they'll just start dual offlane. Uh, Tusk plus Darkseer is really scary for that reason, just because of Snowball. So um, Puppy ends up getting the bounty. That's one way to secure it, right? Get, get your core of first blood, and then he'll let you get the bounty rune? Yeah. <laughs> so thoughts on the lanes here, as we are going to see Kezu coming in early. They're running the Disruptor down bottom, but Secret are going to run the dual lane. Do you, do you see much kill potential for this tri lane? I, I think they absolutely can get kills, um, but the the problem is they might need level two now that they skipped Glimpse. So 
Um, they just need a glimpse, ideally, back into a torrent or a torrent into a glimpse afterwards. Yeah, they can definitely kill these guys. It's just they have to get the right circumstances, and it can't be secret going in on them with two heroes with iron shells. And they need their levels as well, which yeah. could be a bit harder to come by in a tri lane scenario. So. KNRD, he did play a support clock in the group stage, uh, and I thought it might be a support clock here again, but actually we'll find the torrent connection onto Kezu, tries for the TP out, there's the snowball from Puppy. We'll get him back to safety, so good patience by him. Escapes gets back to the well, and Puppy's still here to soak up that experience, so that's G Sports. Close, and, but no cigar. And off on the other side of the map, it's a clockwork in the solo offlane position. He's doing a great job draining MP's mana, but... Um, it's not getting the most levels just yet. It's, it, it definitely is difficult to avoid getting zoned by a Warlock damage-wise. Yeah, that is the beautiful thing about the, the Warlock pick this game. It's pretty much no matter who went to the offlane, unless they went full aggro, they were going to be pressured very heavily. Elk is slightly losing mid, 10 to 4 on the Ember Spirit, 8 no for the Elk, so he's probably semi-content with this at the moment. Um, just went for Brown Boots, fast Iron Talon, so slightly different build, but this will let him jungle a lot more rapidly than a poor man's shield would. Puppy getting aggressive here on King RD, and he does have the Orb of Venom with Kezu coming in. Might be able to find a kill here. He did just use Snowball, so we won't see any more gap kills after that, but as soon as Kezu gets close enough and puts out an Orb of, or uh, Iron Shell, I think it's yeah, going to work. He's got a DD rune that, that just looks like a kill. I, I don't really think there's too much Disruptor can do here with the Point and Thunder Strike at level 1. Said uh, mouse is not stopped working, which I'm gonna assume is uh, meant to be the mouse has stopped working. <laughs> Guys, by the way, my mouse is, is still functional. Just wanted to pause and make sure <laughs> yeah. you're all aware. Well, we'll see if he gets it sorted out, but uh, a likely death here, it looks like for King RD, no TP, uh, no real help in sight. So uh, obviously the lane's not going particularly well for SG Esports to start things off. I guess the question is, what is sort of their long-term game plan with the draft here, as we will be unpausing momentarily, Kevin? And how do you see the lineups matching up later on in the game? I think SG basically needs to take their four heroes, the ones that don't need a ton of farm, and they need to roll around uh, fighting a lot. Uh, maybe Troll will spend a lot of time hitting jungle creeps, but uh, Clockwork, Kunkka, and Disruptor certainly are going to be the pace setters this game, with occasional appearances by Troll, and maybe even sometimes Alk. He's going to get killed in the mid lane, though. Mid one. He really pushed it to the limit there. Almost went down, but even fighting in the acid spray, able to secure the kill. So did the map correctly is see Tavo up top, just duke it out a little bit with Pylai die, trying to eke out what farm he can. But Jifen now going to go back to the jungle. Kinar D also getting a little stacking going. It looks like so fairly passive landing stage here for SG Esports. Not really showing many signs of. Early rotations, which when you see a clock, a kunkka early, you, you think like maybe these guys will be going for those early roaming ganks, but it doesn't seem like the rest of the lineup is going to allow them to do that, especially not with this start. This is maybe a, way, a time to do it, though. Um, uh, Kat, or King RD, sorry, could end up headed mid. Uh, one, one X marks his spot and a torrent follow-up, and Acid Spray on top of that. They could right-click a lot of damage on Ember, but maybe Poor Man's Shield would stop too much. It'd probably take three heroes, I'm guessing. And Puppy kind of anticipating that gank already, just tucked in the trees right behind mid one ready to reinforce should they actually go for that type of dive so while it might look like a kill for sg esports could well result in just giving something up as mid one dives deep in the mid lane how appropriate now the torrent coming out for king rd but with the flame guard active mid one shrugs it off and puppy revealing his position will force them back sg esports just getting crushed so far as we see 20 and 6 for mid one already in the mid lane off to an extremely hot start and Applying a lot of pressure on the south. Yeah, the alchemists, uh, ba they basically needed the ember to be under tower with the X marks the spot. It's pretty much the only way they get that kill. So uh, just played the, the perfect limits here. Chavo being pressured. We'll see Puppy moving towards him as the bounty runes do spawn. But uses the cogs to protect it and secures that rune. So getting that much needed bit of gold. Simultaneously, Kezu also taking to the jungle. So both offlaners playing a little more passively, trying to avoid those ganks. and. Uh, under some duress, but not dying, and obviously Darkseer can have the much better time if it comes to a, a passive offlane with his ability to turbo farm. And Clockwork is in, in no way going to kill MP, but maybe he could get lucky and grab Highlight Die here. Um, Catapult does get spotted. He's got boots and a win lane, so he's really fast, actually, like 85 movement speed faster than the Warlock. That's oh. a kill opportunity if he can get close. That always hurts as an offlane. Yeah, trying to last hit with spells and missing it. <laughs> that catapult really wanted it, but will be denied. So 
I mean, the, the good news here is Adriano, though. He already is at 29 CS, having a pretty good time of it bottom, and does give them that push potential that, that could maybe free up the map for the rest of the team to catch up. And Disruptor's getting pretty good levels as well. The faster six is really the important thing. Level two glimpse would also help a lot, really help grab the Darkseer kill if needed. And Troll certainly has the damage for that if he can get enough right clicks on. So Here Disruptor, comes, just got to get those kills. Here comes mid one, already level six. Out for blood, and oh. he might find a tasty alchemist takedown. Already dropping the wards. The secret, not just going for this kill, Kevin, but also setting up for uh, the economic stranglehold after the kill. As HFN going to reveal his position, they snowball on forward. They commit onto him, catching it with the chains, even throwing out the shards. And secret at a dance of fire and ice will melt the alk down to smithereens. Puppy getting glimpsed back, but no real follow up to this. They're not even going to be able to get the kill on the support, let alone mid one. Or even the Sigil didn't even get last hit there. That's a little tough for them. Elk does TP back in. It's just a very smart game. Like they, they saw that Elk was kind of losing his lean. His HP was a little bit low. And in most cases, Elk just sprints right to the jungle in those cases. But he's still sitting there. He uh, spots it out with the tree break. But that's the benefit of Tusk. SG Sports quickly finding themselves in a deep hole here. Already down 2,000 gold. Experience still fairly even. But when you're running the Elk and... The lanes are going this poorly as far as farm goes. We need some catch-up time, something Secret seems loath to give them. As they already have the level 2 Ion Shell, level 3 not that far off, and you got to imagine once Kazu gets like to level 6 or 7 that they'll be looking for those Ember ganks, uh, maybe with even the Juggernaut joining in. Yeah, it's one of the scariest things uh, to combo with an Ember Spear. It's kind of thinking like Mag, except you just kind of stand there and people die, so like doubles, triples, almost the uh, the value of Flame Garden. Look what mid one can do right now. He's just pressuring the support. Kunkka, this is really bad for King RD. He's going to ball forward, dodging away from the torrent. He does go under tower, though. Remnant back again, but pays with his life. Definitely not worth. Though he gets the kill, is applying the pressure. HFN ends the dominating streak. And with that, also getting so much the free farm, but simultaneously in the bottom lane. Secret continuing to apply the pressure here. Cat gets the glitch back then. The two hero part comes in in RD, back and looking to party. Kezu, can he make it out of here? Adriano just looking for that bash. One more auto attack is going to find the kill. Then the X back. SG Esports not done with Secret just yet, but meanwhile the Sigil is causing problems for Adriano. Has to be careful. Torrent coming out again. Puppy's going to dodge it. Mid one already back. Wants to rejoin the fight. Low as well is Cat. Have to be careful not to feed mid one too much. He is going to get the Adriano kill. And now Secret fishing for a bit more. Rocket coming in. Marking the tombstone of his fallen comrade, but no sight of a rotation yet from that clock, who is still not yet level six. I mean, she's got some spunk so far. They're, they're trying to take it to Seeker when the little engagements. I mean, the first match they played in the group stage did take out OG, which was extremely surprising. Yeah, they could always just just do that again, right? Just uh, same thing. Just win, win your trades, win your game. Uh, it's that simple. Something like that. You, it, it, it really does feel like the type of game where they have to be willing to take those risks, though. If you let Secret get their core items and then just run at you with the Ion Shell on the Ember Spirit, he's just going to rack up kills. Their, their catch is a little bit limited here, Kevin. Until they get the Disruptor ult, there's not a whole lot of tools to shut this Ember. I kind of feel like it's the same thing on Secret, though. I mean, uh, Ember Spirit can gap close. Searing Chains is very effective, but past that, it's basically just Tusk's abilities, and most times he's going to burn those cooldowns at the start of the fight, so... Uh, I, I do think that they can weave in and out of fights pretty well. Um, it's just they, they can't lose their heroes right at the start of the fight. And I'm looking at Kunkka and Disruptor when I say that. Here comes MP as mid one lunges into the fray. He finds the two hero change. The follow-up is there. Puppy on the hunt, finds the kill. Double snowball connection as they quickly cave in two of SG Esports heroes at the tier one. They did bring in the jug for that fight as well, so. It's a great rotation. Aggressive oh. rotations by Secret, and quite early at that. Yeah, it loses him a little bit of farm, but this tower's going to take way more damage as a result. They lose the clarity, though, so that means no healing ward. Unless he pops the magic sticker, he'll commit it, but that means no more spells after that, so very likely will be some tower damage, but not everything. Rocket Flare coming in, just trying to slow down the push. It is the, the level one Rocket Flare, so going for the extra points in Battery Assault. More focused on potential hero kills as that supports the mid game. And he's got level six now, so he'll head there, uh, looking for a kill setup probably on mid one. He's got one remnant, and if they've got Disruptor here with Glimpse, this could be a kill if he can land the hook shot. Tavo looking for it. There is no dire vision of this rotation, but at the same time, the clock. Also, might the, the absence of his hero top might be a giveaway as Kezu pushes out that lane. You can see there's an Observer Ward in the area. 
Oh. Now Tavo, uh, I believe, might have poked his way into ward vision. Now is revealed, so yeah. not cool. able to find a kill just yet. A little surprised he, he actually just killed a large camp instead of trying to attempt to kill in other lanes. Oh, I mean, I guess going for Ember Spirit is very dangerous. It's very easy to mess up the kill, but I thought maybe with Glimpse they'd be able to get it. But I guess without uh, Disruptor ulti as well, it's bringing the death back to you sometimes. you got to be really careful that you don't overestimate your kill ability. And most of their damage is magic at this point, with Alchemist not being farmed at all, just not at the armlet yet, and obviously Troll uh, unlikely to be ganking as he continues to farm the bottom lane. So, may not be able to burst through that Flame Guard very quickly. Speaking yeah. of uh, the Ember Spirit mid one, already BOT's complete. Only That's 10 minutes insane. in. He's matching an alchemist in farm. Actually, he's winning. That's a, that's a dangerous sign. And instantly smokes again after showing for quite a while in the mid lane. He's going to spot the troll warlord. Smoke's broken. Adriano in trouble here. Remnant forward. Mid one's going to catch him initially. Pretty tanky target to take down. They're going to drop the rock for this. Adriano running back to the tower as quick as he can. They don't have the Kunkka boat yet. And Puppy's going to roll in. Interrupts any sort of counterplay. Also setting up for the follow up kill as Pylai die caves his skull and bashing him down with the golem, and now quickly they transition into the tower push, while simultaneously mid one tries to hold the mid lane. He gets the remnant off, so though Cat will glimpse him back, he stays and holds it, ensuring that they will take a tower. They will not even give up damage, and oh, by the way, MP also taking the tier one top during this time. So secret, the full Nelson quickly being applied as they immediately start to choke out SG Esports. This, this is insane. Mid one skill usage is, is actually incredible. He never get, loses any efficiency, always grabbing two heroes and searing chains if they're available. Perfect fire remnant usage as well to guarantee get kills, even dodge the axe spin. I mean, this is like, is he not the highest MMR player in the world right now? He's 9.5k, I believe. It's insane. He's playing so well. As he continues to uh, apply the pressure here, hook shot from Tavo, not going to connect. He gets clips back into the static storm, but just remnants out, zippity doo dah, and away he goes. He even wants to chase. SG have committed a lot with that static storm down. That is the majority of their team fight. There's no Kunkka boat yet. HFN might pay the piper for this. Eats the Omni Slice. Does have the armlet available, but not even going to get it off as he ends up dropping quickly. Secret on the punish and taking team fights without the rock. Just showing how confident they are in their position this game. But yeah, back to your point about mid one. I remember when he really started to take off, the, the one thing Winter mentioned uh, about him is that he's a bit of a hothead, uh, at least when he was starting out. So extremely talented, sometimes would lose his cool, but he's kind of grown into a much more like disciplined mid player we've seen. Still not afraid to go for those big plays, but he's tempered that aggression and is taking smarter fights. We can see just continues to combo with Puppy here. Looking for follow-up kills, now diving head into the base. Secret, looking for the quick and decisive GG. Punishment continues for SG Esports. They get battered inside their own base. In comes the out. He tries to turn the fight of Secret gone a bit too far. No, it seems they stand their ground. Mid one gets another kill. He wants to come back in. The cogs are there, though, and Tavo is cleaning up. They'll find two, somewhat equalizing, but still not dealing with this Ember. Oh, man. And just as you talk about patience, Secret does some really aggressive moves underneath but, the but tier But mid one didn't die. <laughs> That's true, and Puppy's going to go down as well here. Finally, the X marks the spot paying off big time. Kunkka getting six from that one. And the net worths are looking a lot better now after that little bit of skirmishing. It looked like Secret was about to just open the game up and close it out at 13 minutes. But Maybe a little little handicap gifted here to SG Esports. Yeah, they're like, well, we, we need to get some more fantasy points for our fans, so we'll uh, we'll play a little throwy here. A little throwy, but mid one, uh, just constantly applying that pressure. Not afraid of really getting picked off. The Static Storm is up now. He's level three glimpse, so he's got to be cautious about the disruptor. Yeah, that's certainly the party has to worry about the most, especially if there's enough damage to back it up, like Clockwork, for example, in melee range. Using Battery Assault under Static Storm, that could certainly be a kill. So where do you go now if you're SG Esports? Uh, they are going to smoke, so it looks like they want to find some kills. If you're losing, the best thing to do is get kills off. Then if you have your teamfight ultimates, uh, go for the, the high net worth guys. They are going to find mid one right as he ganks Adriano. Can they turn the fight? The boat gets revealed. They get it comes it. the Snowball. Static Storm's there, locking that Ember Spirit in position. They're going to kill off mid one. That's a mega kill streak down, but do they have the follow up? Out comes the Walrus Punch. Now the engage. Good golem deployed by Pylai Dia as they look to turn the tides. Kezu also there with the wall, forcing them back, rolling them over. They still get the advantage as far as kills go, but getting that Ember kill, a pretty juicy takedown that SG Esports should 
have some consolation about. And in fact, the gold overall swinging their way over the last minute or two. Yeah, the comeback gold really paying off there. And all that gold did go to Troll Warlord as well. He was the one that was able to secure the kill. I don't think Yasha is going to make a massive difference here in uh, the, his ability to team fight well, but it will accelerate his farm at least and uh, get him around uh, escape ganks, things like that. It seems like for Secret, uh, the, the game plan is really let's get these towers down and just starve the Alchemist out as much as possible. We saw the aggressive wards earlier, the tier 1 mid has fallen, tier 1 top down, and they're just kind of taking over the Radiant side of the map, Kevin. No yeah. signs of letting up. Their wards are really good for that too. Basically controls everything near the Secret Shop, where which is a common place for Alk to sit around and hang out. Very protected from the, the shrines and things like that, whereas the, uh, the rest of his jungle is a little harder for him to get into. Not as much ward vision, stuff like that. So, And on the flip side, like look at the SG Esports vision. They are playing truly in the dark here. They see almost nothing uh, aside from that, that one Observer Ward down near the bottom rune. But you could, they blew their scan earlier, actually missing Secret or a bit closer. Uh, it just it shows you how claustrophobic the game feels for them right now. You'll see another smoke, three heading towards top, and perhaps the tower is the objective as Antliano revealing himself uh, potentially in the lane. Seems like they want to push. Yeah, they killed the ward as well. Dyer's going to scan to see if they end up rotating back towards their area. Maybe to see if they're uh, grouping in to go into Roche. Another thought, but now their whole goal is to dive a tower and get a kill. But the problem is that Secret's just not going to be there. They're, they're winning so badly. You don't sit around defending by your tier ones. You play in the enemy jungle, in the enemy area of the map. That way you can continue to get kills with your superior gold advantage. So HFN at last does pick up his relic. Should still be like a sub 20 minute radiance. Uh, potentially in the next two minutes should have it with this tower drop as long as he doesn't get ganked. And sub 20 is obviously uh, very slow uh, in, yeah. in, in, for how Alchemist should be. That's usually like a 13 minute ish radiance timing. Uh oh, they get the tower, but at what cost? Glimpse will be there. But mid one able to drop the remnant. He comes right back to the fight again, just negating Cat's presence. Though, as I say that, he gets caught in the cogs. He may have overplayed his hand. Static Storm coming through. They catch him again. They take mid one down. Crucial kill for SG Sports, looking for more. Puppy getting caught out, now caged, and will be finished. MP forced to retreat. SG Esports battling back against what looked like an almost unstoppable secret juggernaut. They have stabilized. Yeah, it's, it seemed like a very weird fight for secret. Even Puppy held the snowball for forever. Finally going in, did get the disable off, but they're definitely playing a little overly aggressive considering their position. Um, I mean, they're ahead, but hey, th that's more and more gold that SG can take back and possibly take a win out of this. It's an alchemist as well. If, if they have some good team fights and they start pumping out some Ag Scepters, the game could change so fast. So if you're Secret, obviously not happy with those last couple of engagements and not so happy with the last you know five to eight minutes, do you slow the game down a little bit yeah, now? Yeah, absolutely. Just play it a little safe, continue with your map control, but the important thing is to get a kill and then take Rush on. They just got an Omni Slash kill on the Troll Warlord. This would be pretty perfect timing, really. But they got they need everybody alive, and ideally something like a Medallion. They actually do have one on Puppy, um, and I think Jug, with, with the help of a couple other heroes, can definitely take it. But they may play it all safer and continue trying to pressure with Shadow Blade right now. Let's see what the move is. We'll see mid one top lane. Got to eat the Alex done. They have Tombo set up from the rear. Maybe could go for this hook shot play. He is going to jump in, but doesn't hit mid one. The catapult not cooperating. Didn't actually have the follow up nearby. Yeah. I, was th I was figuring Cat would be in the neighborhood with a static storm, but he was off towards mid. Yeah, with, without him. Maybe he was considering teleporting or something, but uh, obviously miscommunication there for Tavo to waste his skill. It's a pretty low cooldown, I suppose. Yeah, it's relatively low, and it definitely gets Ember Spirit to leave the lane. That part helps, but gotta use those for crucial moments because now for sure Ember Spirit doesn't have to worry about that for 50 seconds. He's gonna continue pushing out the bot lane, the, the, probably the safest place on the map for Seeker practically. And again, it's SG Esports, the area on the map where they've had the most success, this top side. But there is a ward now. No smoke. They already chewed through two, probably running low at this point. Uh, I do want to point out, Kevin, slightly unusual pickup for mid one, but I think it makes sense this game. Uh, he's going to be going for the Yule Scepter as his next item. Yeah, the, probably to uh, help protect against uh, X Torn. Disruptor going to go down. Doesn't even get him inside the sounds for forever. So that's a, a tough loss. That's going to open things up, and it might not be where they end. Tavo going for the TP out here. So too is King RD in the trees. The remnant through a bit late, mid one. Will immolate those, but can't find the hero. So they dodge a bullet, only losing the disruptor. Secret, though, in pretty good position here near the Roshan pit. Not yeah, sure if they go for it yet, but they got to be thinking about it. 
It's a decent farm comparison, but again, we're, we're looking at Alchemist, the, the guy that gets tons of extra gold every time he gets the last hit. So it's going to come down to good skill usage for them to keep getting back and uh, further into the game. The, the kills are the most important thing by far. Uh, uses, usages of the ultimates, like how Disruptor has been and Clockwork has been, at least the last one that he missed, you can't throw those away willy-nilly. You need to coordinate them together, put the heroes together, get a kill, and continue doing that so it creates space for your team. But right now, it's basically just Alchemist sapping up whatever gold happens to be on the map, maybe some leftover going to troll, and everyone else is standing around. So you've got to go for those kills in these moments, otherwise you're going to get behind. Oh, uh, MP, he was trying to be Q with the blade here in the way, but he is going to get caught, maybe punished. Static Storm drop back into the cogs, he goes, but the wall is there, the boat coming through, crashes and connects, but doesn't find the kill. He stays alive, he omnis and decapitates. Now Atleano to fall, that's three down, secret. Very poised there. It looked like an opening, but in fact, it was a trap. Yeah, Turgonaut's really, really hard to kill right now. Uh, able to keep him alive. I wouldn't be surprised if he Shadow Ward or something like that. I think he had the Healing Ward for the, like, the second half of that barrage of spells as well. Yeah, definitely towards the end. I mean, it basically took everything they had just to get him down to low HP. It was full Disruptor ulti, but he ran out, so they had to glimpse him back. And then he was about to run out again, so they X'd him back in. And then the boat hits him, but he's still alive. In fact, was healing up through it all. His HFN's gonna get caught out here by Puppy. He tries to stay alive, but the armlet active won't matter. Mid one burns him down again. And well, you mentioned Alk trying to carve uh, just whatever farm he can out of this very limited map, but again gets punished off on his own and without any towers uh, to really reinforce. He just doesn't have a whole lot of options. And it's just so easy for Secret to run at him in moments like that. You spot him once, you start chasing him down using BOTs, and you know that your team can't back him up, or his team can't back him up. No ghost ship, no hook shots, no static storm. Just lets him make perfect decisions when chasing. Mid one, the complete, so now a lot less afraid of that disruptor and, and as you mentioned, the Punka as well can get away with those aggressive plays and speaking of which, Kezu also picking up the pipe so another big item against a pretty magic damage heavy team. They rely a lot on the Radiance here, the Static Storm, the boat, obviously a big source of magic damage and this pipe, combine that with the healing ward, gonna negate the vast majority of it. Yeah, I really like it as an item choice, especially when it's already difficult to kill like Juggernaut. So. Okay. He's in deep, and the chains are there. Mid one, catching him out, goes for the glimpse back, and will actually survive for now, but, uh, well, feeds himself to the creeps. Mid one still happy to collect the kill, and with it, the gold as well. They, they need so much help stabilizing right now, because they're, they're kind of trying to create space, get heroes in the right spot to go for kills, but Secret's just playing this so well. There's actually amazing ward vision for SG right now. This is certainly their moment to actually get some of these kills, but Disruptor's ulti is an absolutely crucial aspect of that. And them even going for X combo initiations is so tough. Tusk can snowball himself or others to buy them three seconds. Gank comes on bottom again on Alchemist. Looking for HFN, revving up the stun, mid one. Is going to get clipped by it, but just continues to move forward with the Maelstrom. Does match the toggle. HFN staying alive for now. Now dropping the acid spray. Another toggle. Can he turn it? Almost brings up oh. one. He will, but Pi is there with the save. If he got another toggle off, it's kind of got a dicey. Did he turn his arm? I thought he was going to live there. But I'm I'll not sure if he turned it off or if he just burned down with maybe the Shadow Ward on him. But I think he might have toggled it. He did have Shadow Ward on him. I remember that. Either way. Pretty good kill, but unfortunately he didn't get the experience. He goes down first, meaning that uh, he doesn't get almost everything that MP does. Snowball now is speaking of good vision. Cat, one swing! Oh, God. oh man, that's that's ugly. This is not family-friendly television. And that's after the Silver Edge nerf, too. That's that's basically Shadow Blade level damages. Gets a little lucky on the crit. But the pressure is just so difficult to deal with. Troll with a... Manta style at least can deal better with the Ember Spirit. They do grab the Jug, but oh, it's not, the not fast enough. Uh, Adriano, not lucky, but they also are lacking here on the detection as MP going to chase forward, looking for the pickoff. They cage in KNRD. Adriano wants to gaze, but actually Tombo sprints the trap of his own. Great vacuum, but still the Torrent coming through. They're trapped for now in the Cogs. The Cogs will end, and then the Rock gets deployed. Spinning again is Adriano, and falling in is... Mid one just crushing his way through and the entirety of SG Esports, blows them up, finding more, he just might. King RD caught, it's gonna be a full five man wipe as mid one comes back, grabs the triple, secret in full control now. Yeah, that is a fight secret's been waiting to have for about 10 minutes. We missed a little bit of uh, fan shots basically for them. 
as they've been having some harder and harder team fights, but finally they do the safe thing. They go for the, the Roshan. I mean, it's not often you'll see a team happily engage a full cooldown, full HP lineup under a Shrine, but Secret makes it work with their big advantage. And when you have a mech, a pipe, Warlock ult, Fatal Bonds, you kind of just, you just power your way right through the Shrine. So now Secret, back to the Roche that you mentioned. They're going to be picking up the Aegis here, and the man to grab it. Nice. And you got to imagine that that high ground siege coming soon, but with the tier three now down mid, the way to those shrines has been unlocked. Yeah. So Secret going to take that lower hanging fruit first. That's, this is actually the biggest thing holding Secret back, because they have too many productive things to do in a row. It's, oh, <laughs> we'll, we'll stomp this team fight, then we'll take Roche. Oh, we could have we could work on shrines, so we got to finish Roche first. Now they're like, well, we could end the. Oh no, well, shrines first, guys. Let's play this normally. All of these options and these these low hanging fruits, they're just ready to grab them. Truly the definition of first world problems here. Yeah. They'll push out their lanes. There's still a tier two tower remaining, and they've got one more shrine to do, and at that point it's basically just dead map for SG. It's already very difficult for them to grab farm on the map, but Secret's pressure will, will continue. Diffusal blade on the way for Jug as well, so no uh -oh. no ghost scepter solution. The, sm the smoke comes through. Secret actually did get clipped by the radiant scan. Very fortuitous. I think they want to spring a trap here, but they're all running right by a dire ward, so it might just end up not working out at all. As mid one had the remnant prepped, already coming in and looking for the openings. Initially, will find Pat dropping the static storm. Will manage to catch on MP, but do they have to follow to kill the jug? Not quite enough. The snowballs there, saving the day. El Capitan balls him out. Now they cage him back in, but again, where is the follow up? Where is the damage here for SG Esports? Tavo against four, not going to happen. And now onto HFN MP. As the Omni doesn't need to use it, gets the super long range Samurai Sword Swing. We'll find the kill with the help of mid one. So three down. Hardly using ults there, as they didn't have the golem available. The wall still cooling down. They will have those big spells coming in the next fight. Actually did drop it on the backside, but yeah, you can see even without the golem, they're just not afraid to fight. Their, sk their skill usage just remains to be a little bit wasteful. Like even Clockwork going for the hook shot. Great hook shot. Landed on three heroes, cogs them in. But it was basically him trying to save Alchemist and maybe a very long shot for him to even use the cooldowns. So it won't matter ultimately. He's going to be ready to go when he respawns. But I feel like that's kind of been the story of the game so far. Is SG hasn't been putting their skills together in, in cohesive, strong ganks. Um, not to mention just the other general laning problems. Secret. Not quite ready to breach the base yet. Looks like they may want to shove in these other lanes. Mid one, dealing with top, gets it to the tier two, then rotates on towards mid. Now picking up a Shiva's guard, so going for a relatively defensive and tanky build here with the Yules, the Shivas, as though he weren't already hard enough to break yeah. down. It's high mobility, uh, high magic resistance, high armor. The only thing he's really missing is raw HP. And the Shivas is really nice to have against the troll, an Alk. Like even if you do get caught That's and true. the Yules is on cooldown, still pretty hard to kill him with that. Yeah, the anti-attack speed, the anti-mobility, all very useful this game. They are going to spot mid one, actually. This could be a good initiation. The hook, perfect. Static Storm's there for the follow, but he just yules and tries to survive for now. Now the snowball comes in. The rockets drop, looking to counterplay this. Mid one there with the chain. Slight of fist as well. Continues to oh work. Remnant forward. Kaboom. They just explode. Secret so far ahead here that it doesn't matter if you catch mid one. He shrugs it off. Yeah, the brunt of the damage was dodged with the Yule Scepter, but even after that, he just looks invulnerable right now. Flame Guard blocking a thousand magic damage, plus the like 27 armor he's working with right now. It, maybe this build is not as high damage output, but boy, is he survivable. Yeah, that talent selection is perfect for the state of the game. With, I, mean, I feel like I have hardly seen Troll hit a hero this entire game. Yeah. So you, you're really not worried about physical damage that much in the end anyway. As they will find another catch here on King RD. The longtime veteran from South America. Down he goes. Mid one. Just continues the onslaught in secret. Looking for one, probably two lanes of racks here with the golem already getting started, prepping that mid lane. And there's the GG call. SG Esports outmatched, outgunned, and completely outplayed here overall game one. Yeah, I, I mean, the lanes seem fairly okay for, for SG here, but they weren't able to deal with the darks here. Their roaming duo. They didn't really feel like they accomplished a whole lot. Maybe they got some good levels, but once they did get their sixes, they, they just didn't feel like they, they put their ganks into a really good things. And, and on the other side, on Secret side, as soon as the Ember gets his really fast six, smoking at the same moment, going somewhere else, getting a big kill, just wasn't the same pressure coming from SG. So 20-0 and 0 now, the Secret run continues, and here at the Major, still 
undefeated. What is it going to take to...